Hi, my name is Thomas Spencer. This is TheBibleGuy.com and TheBibleGuyBlog.com. We're doing a little discipleship series. The first booklet is Beginning the Journey, Entering the Kingdom of God. And we are on week two already, day one. You should be very proud of yourself. As, as a way of introduction, let me just continue to expose that we have an enemy. His name is Satan. He has fallen angels, which are called demons. And you have severed your alliance with his kingdom of darkness, and you've chosen to enter through Jesus the door into the kingdom of light. Well, let it be known, we are in a battle. We're in an entire war. But we and you and I personally, we're in a battle individually. Satan's going to do everything in his power to deceive you, to trick you, to try to get you to come back to that lowly kingdom of darkness. He's going to try to, to put temptations in front of you that will cause you to compromise your walk with Jesus. Now, the reason I say that is because uh, we're going to talk about listening to God this week. And there are many religious groups that say God will not talk to you. God will not communicate with you. That you have to go through somebody else. That's a temptation to go back to an old kingdom of darkness. So we're going to talk about listening to God, how to listen to God, what that looks like. And now you may not know very much about the Bible yet, but I'm going to tell you, you can matter-of-factly say that God communicates with you. Now, how can I say that? Somehow, Jesus communicated his love to you, and you received it. You have already heard the voice of God at least once as Christ began to share his love with you, maybe through another person, maybe through a song, maybe through a movie, maybe through a scripture, but Christ has shared his love with you and you heard it and you heard it in your heart. Therefore, Jesus is already has already communicated to you and is desiring to communicate with you all the time. The question is not uh, is God talking to me? God is talking all the time. The question is, how do we hear his voice? The verse I like, it's in Revelation 3.20. It's in your booklet, page 14, uh, week 2, day 1. It is Revelation 3.20. Here I am, Jesus is speaking. I stand at the door and knock. What a gentleman. If anyone hears my voice, there it is, and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. It doesn't get any more clear than that. That's Revelation 3.20. We're also going to talk about quite a bit about a listening room in these next couple of days. Uh, a listening room. Uh, the idea is like... Um, Oh, let's say that you had a, like in the booklet, let's say you had a, a big backyard and maybe you have a, a greenhouse, you know, a little 10 by 10 greenhouse in the backyard. And it might be a good place to go put a chair and bring your Bible and, uh, and uh, just sit and read your Bible and pray to God and listen to him. That would be like a listening room. But it's more of a um, a condition of your heart. You will come to a, a place in your life where at any, any moment, any time, you can pause right where you're at, take a breath, ask the Lord a question, and He will communicate with you. So the listening room is more of an idea like of a heart condition that you are, that you have found a way where you can still your own mind and your own thoughts to listen to his. 
but I do prefer the physical room, and, and we'll get to that in a couple of days. So we know that God has already spoken to you at least once, and, I'm, and I am sure that he has spoken to you, and you've heard him way more than once. Matter of fact, on the website, thebibleguy.com, on the home page, if you go on there and on the left-hand side, it talks about life and death and what that means. And a couple of clicks down, there's a video that I think it's called A Letter from God. You should just click on that and listen to it, and you will start understanding the spirit of his voice. He's very loving, and he's going to talk to you out of love. So, do you remember where you were when God spoke to you about accepting Christ? It's in your booklet, a uh, little answer question, 15, page 15. Do you remember where you were? Was it, a, was it an initial one-time thing, or was it a nudging over several weeks, months, and maybe even years? How did you respond? This is where it's good if you can share this booklet with another person, then you guys can exchange answers. But where were you? and How did you respond to that? You see, I want to encourage you that God is already talking to you, and he never stops. In uh, Mark chapter 4, 23, Jesus said, If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. What does that mean? If anyone has ears to hear, well, John chapter 3 verse 10 says that uh, to be born again, if you're not born again and born of the Spirit, which means you've heard the voice of God and you've accepted His voice and you've made Jesus your Savior and Lord, He says if you're not born again, you can't even see what I'm talking about in these videos. You can't even see the kingdom of God and it's going to sound a little silly. But if you have accepted Jesus, I believe you have, as your Lord, your Savior, you have entered into his kingdom. He has given you the ability to see spiritual things, to see in his kingdom. Jesus said, if anyone has ears to hear, that means, not this ear, this ear. If anyone has ears to hear, they're spiritual. To hear, let him hear. Let him hear the loving words of Jesus to you. Let your heart hear him direct you and lead and guide you into goodness and righteousness. It's not that hard to discern. So, I'm going to speak to God right now on your behalf. And by faith, I know he's going to speak to you. Father God, thank you for teaching us how to hear your voice. Thank you for your loving and gracious comments to us. Thank you for speaking things that didn't come by our own knowledge, but came by your Spirit. Thank you, Father God, for communicating with us and developing this relationship. Now, I pray for my friend in this little discipleship time that, Father God, that they would hear your voice deep down in their heart. Your Word calls it that still, small voice deep down in our hearts. Oh, may they be reminded how much you love them in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, Whatsoever I ask in Jesus' name, I believe that I will receive it. And I believe I'm receiving my prayer that God is talking to you.